Hello everyone and welcome back to another sport creation video. For today's creation we are going to be making a robot night fury or a mecha fury. This is a request suggested by Kemi Wolf from the Dark for the whole 200k subscriber requests or part of the raffle. So to Kemi congratulations and thank you very much for a very very cool idea. So when I first saw the request for a robot night fury, I'd admit at first I was I was very hesitant, <laughs> just because I am not very confident with making robots in general, robots, mechs, everything in that kind of field. But also when I first imagined a robot night fury, I had a bit of a a mecha Godzilla kind of vibe from it. So while Mecha Godzilla is a very cool concept on its own, the idea I had in my head, my first impression, was some sort of like kind of tin can thing something that was a very simple basic imagine a regular night fury just painted silver with a couple of bolts and you know cracks here and then that basically being just it so what i had to do which to try and get a bit of inspiration because that, that kind of creation just sounded extraordinarily boring so to get a bit more inspiration i went ahead and i looked up a couple of uh, just robots night fury images on google while they were rather scarce i did get a lot of inspiration from what i believe was a lego creation or a lego model uh, maybe Lego, maybe something else, but the, the entire gist is there. Uh, so from that, I had the idea instead of rather than going for any particular viable theme, so trying to go, trying to avoid the whole tin can thing, trying to avoid steampunk, because that is actually something I would like to try in the future, but not today. I'm not very confident in that style either. I decided to go with something rather hollow, kind of like a bit more of a futuristic design. I did make this creation during a live stream, so I had a lot of inspiration and ideas from the chat as well, from you guys. And so in the end, I tried to go for a bit, a, a bit of a mixture between a very heavily improvised and just off the cusp, just made up as long as I go along, kind of thing of a futuristic black and steel kind of robot with a lot of uh, tech from Ark Survival Evolved. And the tech was a really neat idea because if you check out the a tech tapajara or anything else in art, they have features that you could add onto a night fury, such as the wings, the big bladed glowing wings, or the spikes going down the back. And these are all things I tried to play with later on. But for where we are currently at now with the video, so by this point, I was really trying to just focus on the general form, the very, very basics. And what I decided to do was to have a lot of cool sport going on. So we had the basic spine, the tail, the arms and the legs. And the idea was for that to be the basic frame. Sure, they are organic pieces, but they'll still be painted black. They'll still be shiny. They'll become one with all the actual uh, plated bits and armor. I decided to make the arms and legs uh, a bit exaggerated and chunky. Try to really emphasize, you know, what it is on the Night Fury. They do have rather larger forearms and uh, calves as opposed to the biceps and thighs. They do kind of kind of grow outwards as their limbs continue on and i tried to exaggerate that feeling with this robot because it is after all going to be a robot therefore certain features will have to be heavily exaggerated and that is what i tried to do here i also tried to go with a couple of other very basic things such as you know larger shoulders get hips in place the pelvis all these parts that i would imagine on a robot would probably be quite heavy very dense with just general stuff going on, plating, armour, probably circuits and such underneath because of all the joints, all of the rotators and all that kind of stuff, rotors even. That's what I imagined, so I wanted to have these bits here to be just larger and overall bulkier. For the rib cage, the rib cage is a bit of a typical thing. I of course wanted it to have some kind of thing going on for the chest, for the ribs. And while I didn't go for a little rib cage, I did try to aim for a general like a hollow core, a container. And what I wanted was to have this container, you know, clearly the heart of the creature, just, just like a regular night viewer, like a regular animal in general. I'd have the power core in there. And while admittedly, as the creation went onwards, I was running out of complexity, so I wasn't able to add quite all the detail I wanted to, but I was able to get a bit of a glowing effect in the, in the chest cavity to display that that is where the power is situated. That is, quite literally, the heart of the robot. When it came to the shoulder blades, I, like I said earlier, I was really trying to emphasise and bulk out certain aspects of the of the robot. And the shoulder blades, I made the point earlier about how the hips and the shoulders would have like a lot of things going on there with the joints and such. With the shoulder blades, or the general back of the creature, the back of the ribcage, etc., that being where the wings are held, I felt like it would be very crucial for that to be probably the largest bit of bulk, the largest bit of armour and such. So I tried to get some rather rather large, probably <laughs> a bit over the top pieces, such as a little spike poking out there. But I felt like in the final, 
in the actual final results of the, of the robot, I felt like that added like a really nice, I, I felt like I'm repeating myself here, just a big bit of bulk. After a while, I just started to feel a little bit lost in terms of what more to add. So I figured I'd start taking a little bit more inspiration from a typical skeleton. And as we see here, I started adding plates around the neck, around the spine, around the tail. And although they are pretty much just a vertebrae and they don't really serve a much purpose for the robot itself, I felt like it just did a quite good job of just adding more to the robot, more to the creation. As like I said earlier, robots, whether it's a robot or a mech or a cyborg, just that entire field and genre, they are one of my weakest strengths or just generally one of my weaker points in sport. I struggled to both improvise and to mimic the genre and the style, which was why I really had to... I kept on stopping and thinking of this creation, wondering what can I add more, what's missing? So a lot of things felt missing, but I couldn't figure out what. So. I went back into my comfort zone and tried to add a bit more organic pieces here and there. And I felt like, again, in the end result, I felt like they all worked. But throughout the actual creation process, it did feel quite jarring. And I felt a little bit unconfident while going through it. When it came to these shoulder plates, after a while of the creation, I kind of realised that putting the shoulder plates on the actual arms themselves was a bad idea. As the end result was, whenever the creature would animate, just as simple as breathing, the little, little idle bouncing up and down animation the shoulder plates kind of flapped and at first I, I did kind of like the idea it just showed movement and such but as as the creation got on and it started getting a bit larger a bit more going on with it it started to feel like that the flapping shoulder plates just felt extremely out of place so fortunately the armor pieces do indeed stack on each other and therefore I ended up attacking it onto the larger shoulder plates on the back of the creature having all rigid and that way they now look like more of a shoulder guard as opposed to a plate. Again, more armour. With the rib cage or the general ribs, so I wasn't trying to literally make ribs, but I just wanted more going on there. As I said earlier, my overall theme for the creature, the goal, was to have like a very hollow kind of thing going on. I wanted it to clearly be a robot. I wanted, I didn't want it to be very clunky and very thick and such, but I did want there to be a lot of hollowness and just the idea of shapes, the idea of containers and such and therefore I started adding these makeshift ribs. The ribs aren't really the purpose of them. I'm not sure what exactly they would be, whether it's circuits and cables, whether it's just perhaps like bars or ribs here yeah, to keep the entire thing rigid and together. But the end goal of what, of what I wanted for them was to just have a hollow container that wasn't entirely hollow, you know, not entirely flimsy. In the end it was met, so whichever role that those rib-like things would, would uh, perform, it didn't really matter, the aesthetic was there. When it came to the head, so I was a little bit torn when it came to the little tufts, if you will. I'm not sure the best way to describe them, the ears, the horns, or the quills. I'm, I'm not really sure the best way to, to describe the little appendages on Toothless's head, or Night Fury's head. But I was a bit torn. On the one hand, I figured I'd just add just a typical rigid thing. But on the other hand, my stream was re recommending I add some tubes onto there. Maybe it's with some kind of steam vent. Now, while I didn't want the robot to necessarily be powered by steam or to have smoke such coming out of it, it is a it is a dragon after all. So in the end, it didn't really feel like that much of a bad idea. Perhaps, perhaps if you will, the tube-like horns or the horn-like tubes more like. Uh, perhaps they, I don't know, absorb air or absorb a thing or maybe even just expel any residue from breathing fire or plasma. Whatever the idea, but the purpose of those tubes are, then, are now there for the imagination. I did just add that little bit extra to the creature. In the stage, the neck started to feel a little bit bare. So like I said earlier, I felt like there was a lot missing the creature. And I ended up going back and forth between organic designs and robot designs. And here, quite simply, I added a few more vertebrae, plates, whatever word you wish to use, along the neck and along the tail. Again, just to bulk it up a bit, just to make it a little bit larger, a little bit more interesting. And it's a very simple thing that, in my opinion, made quite a nice difference. While this robot definitely may not be the most functional, in the end that's not really the goal. I, the main goal that I wanted to have here was to simply make just a cool looking robot creation. And therefore it really does give me a lot of freedom to just add whatever I want here and there. Just entirely for the aesthetic, for the design choice. And I felt like here and there it really did help out. When it came to the wings, I, was, I had all sorts of ideas and I just had no idea what to do for any of them. But the overall lingering idea I had, so those of you who have watched How to Train the Dragon, you'll know what the Night Fury is and you'll know that Toothless's back tail is injured and he has a mechanism or a like a flag, if you will, to help 
to help um, steer him, you know. The little red flag with the Viking white symbol on it. And I figured, while this Night Fury isn't necessarily toothless, I still like the idea of having that red in here. So what I imagined is to have that same red in the wings, in the both ends of the tail, and in the, uh, I can't think of the right word, the little wing-like appendages near the rear that helps uh, steer and float and such. And I figured to have all that red would really would probably be like one a very nice contrast. It would just really help make the creature pop out more. But also it would stay true to the general theme of Toothless's tail. That red would still be there. I, I thought it would be like just a nice little neat feature. Just it wasn't really important or anything. Just a wonderful design choice for the, for the extra contrast and colours make it stand out more. But also just to have that little reference to the actual movie. Now, as for actually putting that into practice, <laughs> that was an entirely different matter altogether. In terms of ideas for actually making the wings, one of the ideas I was given was to take inspiration from the Falcon from Spider-Man Homecoming and how that character in his, in his uh, metallic wings has mostly bladed wings, but he also does have the engines in the middle. And I thought that that would be a very, very nice futuristic touch. Actually making them, however, it was actually surprisingly easy, come to think of it. Thanks to the parts available in the drone parts mod, I was able to make the rotors, if you will, or the engines really nice and easily. But making the rest of the wings really was the issue. I ended up having to cycle through a variety of different techniques, different parts, even a bit of course wheel parts in fact as well. Because I was always having an issue of either the positioning, the way that they folded, the way that they overlapped or clipped, or the textures, and it was really hard to strike that balance. So it just wasn't really any parts that I can get, I just really did what I wanted it to do, whether it was bladed wings, bladed metallic wings, such as from Spider-Man Homecoming, such as from Gods of Egypt, the gods and their wings there. It was either that style, or it was simply a typical dragon or bat wing uh, design with the fingertips and the membranes in between, having the membranes being the red feathers. I, I say feathers, mainly just for the parts, not literally feathers, but you know guys, sport has its limits. I tend to use feathers to have the, the illusion, the appearance of a membrane. And in the end, I decided, I decided that going for the frame first was probably the worst idea. And instead, I tried to overlap with a bunch of feathers first, put all the feathers in place. That way we could have the reds, we could have the membrane, etc. whatever there. And thanks to the sport stacking mod, I was then able to start putting on the other pieces, the actual frame itself, the fingers onto there on top. And while I did take quite a bit of back and forth and figuring out, I did feel like that ended up being the best technique for this creation. To have the feathers there and then to have the other frames on top, you know, going a bit backwards here, but it actually seemed to work very well. When it came to the tip of the wings, I actually decided to go back a step and to use some of the black armor from Dark Injections, not just for the aesthetic, the appearance to have, you know, large, scary black spikes on the wings, but mainly because it would then be more consistent with the rest of the, of the design. And by this point in the creation, I was realizing that, of course, the wings are different because by default, by nature, they are very different component compared to say the arms or the legs or the head but they did feel extremely different in the creation itself and so adding just that one little bit from the black armor that one little duck injections part there just on top of the rest it just helped it tie it all together it helped remind me of the fact that these wings are indeed a part of the creation they show they follow the same theme the same idea and as I mentioned earlier I would be using the same, same technique for the tip of the tail and for the rear of the body Again, seeing that design repeated more and more throughout the creation really did just help tie everything to together. And all of a sudden, the red, the introduction of new parts, such as the feathers, the drone parts, that have a typically a very different texture, suddenly they all just became one. They became one with the design, and overall, just, like I said, just tied everything together. After having all of the wing pieces sorted, all the aerial mechanics on the, on the creation, I then started to buff out the tail a little bit more, just adding a couple more vertebrae going down. That way it's a little bit more consistent, a little bit more interesting to look at. And then I moved on towards the eyes. Now for the eyes, I decided to go with some robot eyes here, just very, very basic ones. That way just have a, a hint of an eyebrow or a, um, an eyelid more like. And I decided, originally I was gonna color in the eyes green, that way to really emphasize the whole Night Fury thing. Because Night Furies do after all have green eyes. But after a while, and as I started to add a bit more of, um, add some effects into the rib cage the whole power core idea I had earlier, I added purple effects because I figured 
macros do breathe purple fire or purple plasma or whatever it is that you want to call it. Their, their breath is purple. So I figured purple energy would be the most suitable. And when I rendered the creation, I found the purple energies with the green eyes. They just, they just felt weird. They contrasted way too much. So even though I kind of lost out on the, you know, another reference to the real Night Fury, instead I went the purple eyes because it just felt more consistent. It, it just felt more... I guess more artificial, come to think of it. It definitely felt more artificial. I also gave the eyes a bit of a purple glow as I can imagine the robots using the eyes so like headlights, like a car. You know, maybe it just turn, turns them on full swing and you can see from like miles ahead or I don't know, it just, it gives that kind of vibe that the eyes are glowing, that they're powered, they're electronic. And after, in the end, when it came to the whole power core of the ribs, so I added all the purple in there. I had a couple of the Galactic Adventures Captain Parts shields, sort of like disc things that kind of pulse, and that I thought would be a really cool idea because while the ribcage is very empty, very open, which was the intended design, there were some parts that I felt a little bit too open, and that simple effect, the pulsing shield, just made it it just really closed it together visually it's still open it retained everything i wanted it to but it gives the illusion that there's just more going on there that is protected and of course it being a robot obligatory spark effects unfortunately as we near closer to the end of the creation there were a couple of features i was not able to include in the end and the more crucial one that i really w would have liked to have added was the whole the tech like spikes running down the uh, down the back and not only would that have been a quite a neat idea like i've explained earlier a very nice tech kind of thing going on but also it would have been a really awesome tribute to the alpha form in how to train dragon 2. i figured those tech lights running down the back like twin pairs of spikes going down would amazingly mimic the alpha form from Toothless in the second movie. But unfortunately, spore being spore, there are limitations and I was not able to fit it in this time. But hey, who knows, maybe for the future. When it came to the colour scheme of the creation, after mishing and mashing between a few different things, in the end I decided to stick with a black and red theme. Now the black was obvious because again, it is a Night Fury. I went with a bit of a lighter shade of black as well, so a bit of a grey to have like a just a little bit of contrast between the different uh, the different parts, the different textures. That way a couple of pieces pop out a little bit more than others and that way the creation isn't just an entirely flat black colour scheme. The red, the red in my opinion is absolutely gorgeous, I'm really glad that I went that kind of design. As like I said, it's a bit of a homage to the tale that Toothless has in the movies. But also, it just, it, it makes the robot feel quite menacing in my opinion. It really just pops out the whole Night Fury aspect. And it just makes, it makes the whole thing just feel kind of intimidating in my opinion. And overall, I, I just absolutely love it. While I still have absolutely no confidence for making anything mechanical, I am really pleased with how this went. Especially because, because in my opinion, the production was rather amateurish because I, I just, don't have that I don't have that mentality to have like nuts and bolts here or a bit of circuitry there I just I had to approach it with a lot of organic point of views which is probably the wrong way to go so I tried to have like armor instead of it's kind of tricky to, just, to describe but the point is, is that the overall end result despite being uncomfortable despite being very improvised and experimenting the end result I'm very proud with I'm very very happy that it came out and Cami Wolf from the Dark I hope that you enjoy it too as always guys, thank you very much for watching, hopefully you learned a couple of things or two, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and thank you.